Human society is based on lies, deceit, manipulation. I'm not saying that this is the only way that things work. It's a level of reality, a very dominant, predominant, powerful, gripping layer of reality that in my experience, people have been wrapped up in for quite some time. And if you just look, if you observe how things function out there in the world and how people organize themselves into little tribes and groups and keep secrets and exploit each other, it's all a big game that, well, I don't know, maybe it does a little bit more harm than good at this point. I'm not sure. However, my intention in this channel is certainly not to expose the lies of, you know, fill in your favorite organization or group or theme or whatever. Like, I am more interested in self-exposure in that, and I'm not doing this for any sort of selfless or altruistic reasons. I'm doing this because I'm in a lot of pain and suffering and kind of don't feel like I have any options left and my back is against the wall. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of more of a desperate gambit than anything. So I think back to the last time that I ever really worked with a group of people in a normal job in a kind of office environment. And I was working at a research laboratory in a city in Boston. And I remember at that time that I refused to even allow my name to be published on academic works that I contributed to. So normally in science research, whoever is contributing to a paper, they get listed as an author on that paper. And I said, I don't want my name out there. I'll do the work, but I don't want any of the credit. And <laughs> you know, it's there's a lot of different reasons for that and I can get into that. But one of the reasons is fear of exposure. I don't even want to be known. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be out there, even in the most obscure and protected way. And for fear of shame, for fear of having to be involved in things, especially things that I didn't understand. Um, and we're just talking about academia here. We're talking about scientific research. We're not talking about, I've worked in other industries that were far more devious and far more sinister and far more ethically ambiguous <laughs> for my taste anyway. Um, and it's all good, oh, as always, right? I like to say that. It's all good. Like, none of these things are inherently good or bad, and I don't really judge any of them. It's more just, you know, pick your poison kind of a thing. But I feel like it's sort of time for me to... I've spent my whole life hiding and protecting myself. And rather than continue to do that, I'm just going to let it all hang out there, you know? Um, total self-exposure, because there are certainly different levels on which this is happening, and there's the personal level, and there's layers of privacy. There's my psychology, there's my thoughts, my feelings, my innermost secrets. Um, there's my health, you know? My, pri my protected health data and information, and all that sensitive information. And, you know, every imaginable weakness of mine that could be exploited. And I just don't want to play that game anymore. So <laughs> I'm kind of of the mind to just put everything out there on the internet. Anyone can see it at any time if they want to. Who cares? And the thing about it is, is like, I remember seeing during especially the last election cycles, how the whole world seemed to be wrapped up in conspiracy theories. and all. So there's this whole, you know, the internal fears and paranoias get projected out there onto the world and suddenly we're really fixated on which 
public figure or celebrity is the most deeply involved in some horrific scandal. And for me, it's like, well, yeah, those things are real. There are all kinds of abuses and atrocities that are, that happen. Um, and that's just part of the world that we need to deal with. And actively, not just something that we, okay, we'll just whack them all and then sweep it under the rug. It's like, no, this just has to be an active part of the discourse eventually. And that's not the angle from which I'm wanting to approach things. I'm not trying to analyze or, you know, I'm not trying to whistle blow any particular industry, um, you know, because there are certainly some industries or some things. I'm not trying to get into that. I'm actually just trying to give my own personal inner exposition on, yeah, these are all the exact things that I've experienced in my life, judge them or not. Um, and here are the immediate health struggles that I'm facing, and I'll tell you exactly what they are if that's what I feel like talking about that day. And so, you know, okay, well, insurance companies are not gonna wanna deal with me. Oh, well, I don't really need to deal with them either. Um, you know, like, at a certain point, you just kind of give up those kinds of fights and, um, and hope that public, open, collective knowledge and discourse, even of the, uh, the mo things that we most don't want to share, will somehow be contributing to some positive um, future environment. And if not for me, then maybe for the next generations, you know. Um, yeah. So it's a lot, but I kind of just want to give myself the space within the bounds of whatever YouTube's, I don't know what they censor and what they don't and what they allow, what they don't, but. And that might look like a different thing on, on a different day, you know? This whole idea came about because I got a bizarre and surprising test result, a medical test result, that unless it was a mistake, it kind of puts me in a really unusual position of having something that pretty much no one had. Like there's 8 billion people on the planet and there's probably a handful of people <laughs> who would be in such a position as I'm in based on this particular those kinds of real like idiosyncrasies because we all are unique right and if you even just look at medical um there are people with extremely rare medical conditions maybe there's one person on the world in the world maybe they're the only one known you know being in those kind of situations it's like well what am i <laughs> i'm a freak of nature who am i <laughs> you know you can't really conform at that point when you when you're even the statistical data is pointing you out as a extreme, in my case, six sigma outlier, which, you know, I'm not gonna get into the math on that, but it's way out there. <laughs> six standard deviations, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so I don't know, like if that means that what I'm saying is gonna be miss the mark completely and no one's gonna know what I'm talking about, or if it's totally irrelevant and what I'm saying is just understandable anyways, um, despite how deviant I might be. <laughs> but today I'm able to laugh about it. Yesterday I was in too much pain and I was like, Ugh. I think I recorded a video, but I didn't post it. Decided to spare everyone from that. For, but you know what? It's not, it's not gonna be like that. Whatever I'm going through is just gonna have to be part of the process. So only if that's what I want to do. I'm not going to force myself. I'm just like, okay, get in, make another video. Oh, you feel sick and you can't get out of bed? Get up and record a video and show the people your pain. It's not going to, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't think that I'm like, yeah, I'm, I don't think that I'm uh, sadistic or masochistic really. Um, but I do, I do need to unravel all of that. Like, cause I do hate myself. I know that and whatever that means. Um, I'm not very intelligent. I'm not, people think I'm really smart, but I don't know a lot. So I'm not sure what, what is that supposed to mean? You're really smart. Maybe it's just something nice they say. Um, cause the way that I talk sounds a certain way. I'm not really sure, but I've like lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I lost my train of thought. Well, yeah, um, this video is not as 
I really thought I was going to just map out this plan, <laughs> but I'm just meandering. So it might look like one day I might sit down and be quiet and go into my mind and start walking down the corridors and open a door and see what's in there. Oh, wow, that's a scary... Okay, let's not look at that one. Let's go to the next door. <laughs> open that one. Oh, beautiful. It's the light of hope. Well, let's go bask in that glow for a while and see what it feels like to be hopeful. All right, well, I had enough of that. Okay, we'll go to the next room and sort of, sort of exploring the mind, which I don't know why, but it's not something that I've had a whole lot of success doing by myself. Like, oh, okay, I'm in my room with my journal and here's what I'm thinking and here's what I'm feeling and I'm going to get to know myself. I don't know. Maybe it's that I need to be performing. Maybe I need to be seen. Maybe I need to be connecting that I need to process it. Um, I've noticed that when I process information, if I'm talking to people, it all makes a lot of sense very quickly. I'm just like, oh, take that, take that. Okay, yep, do, 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 do. And before you know it, I know whatever it is I was trying to accomplish or solve. But when I'm sitting alone, like, okay, work puzzling it out for myself, uh, it's not that I can't do it. It's just like, just for me. So maybe that's part of the issue too, is, you know, having no self-esteem or no sense of self that I don't think I'm worth it. All these things can be explored, but yeah, I might share all of my most personal, I mean, <laughs> what financial details do I have to share at this point? <laughs> yeah. When you're homeless or when you're broke or when you're, you know, well, you don't really care telling anyone what your situation is unless you're really ashamed of it, which at this point I'm not. Um, when you have a lot of money, you might want to keep that to yourself. Uh, when you have assets, when you have, well, we, we guard and protect that, of course, but um, yeah, so just sharing everything, all of it. And my personal psychology, my fears, my deepest shame and embarrassments and things like that, which obviously I can sit here and talk about that and say, yeah, I'll just share my shame and embarrassment right on camera. Um, doing that might not prove to be as easy as I'm imagining. That could, yeah. The actual emotional experience of that might be, well, anyway, we can dream, we can hope. Um, and sharing, yeah, details of my personal life, my personal history, my health issues, you know. It's not going to be protected by HIPAA. It's going to be on YouTube. I just don't care at this point. Insurance companies, oh well. Don't want to help me out? Fine. I don't really have anything to lose at this point, so. Kind of, yeah, and maybe, who knows, maybe we can bring in some of those belief systems from the New Age groups and the alien worshippers and the, you know, spiritualists and all of it. Um, you know, everything is possible, the healing is possible, you know, just change your mind, there's quantum realities, you know, you got so many different mindsets and things all floating around in this world here. Just get it all. Let's just, <laughs> just bring it all into the conversation. So hopefully I, I don't plan on talking to you from any kind of, um, obviously because I'm not spiritually awake and I'm definitely not anywhere spiritually enlightened, uh, never have been, never was even close. So <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you from any kind of like, distanced or spiritual perspective or even a like you know grounded heartwarming loving embrace or you know none of those things i'm just going to talk to you out of whatever my messed up personal conditioning is as an ego as the story that when you if you're a meditator or if you've you know go into those kinds of things you distance yourself from those in a way or you separate yourself from those in a way that is, it becomes irrelevant. It's not interesting. It's not something you really think about very much. It's not something that you just, you become selfless, more selfless. You're not interested in your own personal story very much. You're not the center of the show. You're not that important. And that's not a bad thing. And you're able to be of service to the world. And <laughs> that sounds really great. But, you know, I have a lot of personal psychological crap that is probably not very important. It's probably not a big deal. And yet we all 
at some point in our lives feel like this is a big deal because it's my story. And I want to be seen in that story and I want to be heard in that story. And I want to share that story. And well, you, oh, I'm hearing, um, listen to me. Oh, I just, I'll be right back. Well, let's make this totally interactive, all right, shall we? This is part of my story. Food blog. <laughs> <sighs> Gotta be efficient. Gotta multitask. So, yeah. Because in my mind, like, oh man, I want to have an hour to just spaciously sit here and record videos and really like get into it. And hopefully sometimes I will have that time because I really do want to record more long form videos um, that are unedited. Like I hope I don't edit this video. Don't edit this video. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is my first attempt at just outlining what my current vision is for the channel, which I guess it's probably going to change again. You know, it'll, it, <laughs> and I'll just keep doing this where I update. Here's what my intention is now for the channel. This is what I'm thinking I want to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exposing myself and not in that way, <laughs> though we will be talking about all that too, sexuality, power, all the gross things, like all the things that I was talking to someone last week who said, you know, if you ever really want to experience pleasure and you can't, ha it's not that you can't just have pleasure without pain, but if you want to experience pleasure and sensuality and sexuality and all that, you can't experience that without the gross things. Like if, I don't know, Everyone's different. I'm sexually repressed. I'm, you know, very separate from that. Um, and you can go through life having relationships and having sex with other people in seemingly very intimate ways, but still be totally distant or detached from it. And there's an inherent, like, grossness in the humanness of, like, if you really, you know, I think about it too much, like, what the hell are we actually the bodies and the fucking bacteria and like the bodily fluids and all of it, you know, you can get, of course, sure, you get in the moment, you're having a good time. You don't think about these things because all the great neurochemicals are coming in and, oh, I feel great, you know? So it's, that's sort of like an immunity against like the actual grossness of like the body stuff. And yeah, and of course with sex, like anything is fair game for becoming sexualized or becoming fetishized, you know, like literally anything under the sun, a lot of which is considered gross to most people. That hence why it's a fetish. And um, yeah, like just all of that stuff and in all the more like unpleasant, overarching so social issues of racism and bigotry and classism and you know, institutionalized violence and all of that, which like different groups and different classes and different geographies of people experience differently and just making it one big conversation that like everyone's kind of trying to do. We're always trying to do that, but there's levels of it, which are so like, so many of the disclosure. Okay, Edward Snowden and his whole disclosure and all, there's so many examples of these massive things that have happened that it just gets swept away or whatever. I don't know. I want to just contribute whatever my little piece is, if, I, if there's anything I can do to um, becoming a just open and honest and authentic human being that has nothing to hide, that has no fear. Scary to think about, scary to even think about. Because what is it to have? Because if we that if we bring in that sort of spiritual paradigm, your spirit, your soul, who you truly are, is I mean, effortlessly, endlessly impermeable to any kind of anything. It's just you, you can't be hurt, you can't be damaged, you can't be anything. And so bringing that 
that a aspect into it as well. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to become a saint, um, but it's good to keep in mind. And the more that that comes through, the better. And the more that the heart opens, the better. Because my heart has been closed as far as I know, pretty much my entire life. I don't trust people at all. I'm not open to people at all. And I'm extremely like keen on when people are being exploited and trying to stop that from happening. And especially when it comes to anyone I care about, even people that I don't care about, when I see abuses of power in groups, it's like there's just this spidey sense that goes off. And I say, I can see this happen. Like 10 years before the scandal comes out, I see it happening. I know it's happening. There's nothing I can do to stop it. And I, like, I have to wonder at a certain point, well, why is that? What is in my history, my psychology, my what has been done to me or what have I done to other people in this lifetime and past life? Who, who knows? There's so many different interpretations. I um, feel like I'm talking so much and just not breathing. I feel like if I don't stop talking, then I'll lose the connection. That's another thing that I need to explore. Because I don't want to be over agitated, right? That's not in balance. And finding the balance is difficult. You know, if I like lull myself into a stupor, also you're, we're gonna lose the attention. You know, there's a certain middle ground there that we want to kind of dance around as best as we can. While also making room for, you know what? If you talk a million miles a minute for 20 minutes, that's okay. And if you get stupid and just don't say anything for five minutes, great, so be it. It's all like the, the critical judging mind is for me is just real powerful. Be right back. All right. Well, we'll just continue using real life as a subject matter. So. Yeah, I heard a sizzling noise and recognized that the temperature that I set the stove on is certainly not the temperature that it's cooking on right now. And so I had to turn that burner off and move the pot to another burner. And, you know, when it comes to technical proficiency um, and understanding how the world works and understanding the environment and what's happening in that stove, you know, on a technical level, there's a lot of different levels, but in terms of the electronics of it, in terms of the heating elements of it, um, the physics of it, we can understand these things intuitively or how, whatever levels we're at, we can also kind of get in our heads and get technical and try to solve the problem, fix it, understand it. Um, that kind of mindset for me is very protective because then I don't need to look at the personal elements to it, right? It's not personal. It's just a stove, right? And yet, when we live, we personalize things. Our house becomes us. Our car becomes us. Our phone is an iPhone. It's me. It's I. And everything we do with those things uh, takes on this personal flavor to it. And so and then we map ourselves onto those things, and we interpret ourselves based on the feedback of those things. Um, it's this more subjective approach. Whereas the objective approach for me is, okay, I'm going to understand how a stove works. Well, YouTube's great for that. You can learn anything on YouTube. And then I'll be in control. Then I will know. And I don't need to be embarrassed and ashamed that I don't know how something works. You know, that, that like, that is such a big thing for me is, is feeling like I've been stripped of my personal power because everyone has the capacity on some level, regardless of what your personal situation is, even if you have different kinds of disabilities, like we all have our own relative world and we all have a relative capacity to understand things and to feel a sense of personal power and agency with our relationship with the environment. And I feel so emotional about this because it feels to me like 
that was taken away from me. Or, yeah, that was damaged um, at a very young age for me because I knew that I had the ability to succeed in a lot of ways that, for whatever reason, other people might have not wanted me to. And that's competition. That's jealousy. That's fear. Um, human nature. And within the patriarchal system, the way that you have to just protect yourself and block everything else out, and just within your little circle of protection, then you can figure it out, whatever you're doing. You have control over that. Um, however, to actually be open to learning requires openness. To really be able to learn and to change requires openness. And <laughs> the, the, the impossible frustration that I feel at like being a child and figuring something out that the adults don't know no one around me knows how to do it, but I do. I can figure it out because I have that capacity. And I think so many children are so intelligent. And like the way that it's a whole nother subject. I mean, <laughs> the idea of caring about children or children's well-being or that children have the capacity to think or act or have power, you know, that's like a new idea anyway. <laughs> but So I'm coming at it from like, I was born in the 1980s in America. And... To be a young, young, young child and like interacting with my environment and doing really cool shit. Like I'm manipulating the environment in ways that surpass what I'm seeing around me. That makes me feel good about myself. That makes me feel powerful and in control of my own destiny and of what's happening to me. Um, because I'm young and I'm full of vital energy, right? So to be open and to then use that power, like... And to, ha to then have a, a physically large, powerful adult come and just, you know, you don't know what you're doing. It's like, well, actually, I do know what I'm doing and I'm doing it right now. And if you were to just shut up and watch what I'm doing, you would learn something, right? So you can have like a three-year-old child who's exceeding, you know, all of the supposed adult teacher figures or whatever around them. Um, who are just kind of going based off their limited understanding of things. And children are just more, you know, open. They're just more open and permeable. And so they're able to be totally curious and learn about what's happening in reality right now. And, you know, it's the whole topic of curiosity and learning is, is one that I feel so, it's so emotional for me. Um, because... Oh, it's such, a, that's, I think that's such a good topic to explore. Um, the whole curiosity killed the cat um, paradigm and how that relates to, you know, it is, it, it, there are, of course, you know, you have, there's always a balance there. And where I'm at in my life right now is I can't really push any more boundaries um, because the way in which I grew up and pushed boundaries and pushed boundaries and pushed boundaries and, pushed boundaries and had so much pushback created such an internal struggle and conflict that I have depleted all my vitality, my resources, my physical body has, it's, it's, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak these things into existence. You know, I can only tell you what, well, anyway, that's something I actually don't want to talk about right now is my physical health and all that. Um, because it's too that can that could just bring me into too depressing of a territory, and I have other things I'm trying to do right now with my day. Um, so if I could take a step back, um, right now I'm trying to walk the edge. I can't push it anymore, so I'm just walking the boundary, walking the edge, and seeing what that feels like. Just right on the edge, without trying to hold back and without trying to overextend at all. And if that has to look like just walking around in a circle over and over again, because that's where my limit and my edge is, then I'm going to stay right there. I, re I really don't like retreating, so... Um, fucking stubborn. Stubborn asshole. It's like... I was talking to... Um, I started doing... 
personal training. So for physical therapy and for fitness. I had the first session with the trainer and he was telling me he's in a powerlifting competition and he had to take one week of strategic deloading where I guess he was lifting less weight um, as he was progressing to get ready for this competition. And he's telling me that and I'm listening to it. I'm saying, oh, like I can't, uh, even the idea of just holding back for a week, you know, as you're progressing towards this building your strength. To me, it's like, oh, I can't bear the thought of doing that. You know, it's obviously terrible. Like, would I have made a good general or something in war? Not with my current lifetime mindset. Never retreat, always just push forward. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, not smart. But it's another thing about my psychology that I will maybe need to explore. Um, so I'm just walking the edge and certainly there's a lot that can be felt and sensed and incorporated just by doing that. But, but when, when you're a child, um, you know, it's boundless. Your, your, your imagination is boundless. Your energy is boundless. Um, your potential is boundless. Your capacity is boundless. And It's such a classic, like I'm just thinking of the classic examples of like parents who, who like want their kids to live out their, actually, I don't want to talk about this. This is a whole stupid thing. Let's check on the stove on the other burner. Anyway, yeah, so there's obviously something wrong with the main burner on my stove uh, because it was heating the food like a thousand degrees instead of 400 or 500, which is what it should have been. I don't know those numbers. I'm just making those up, but that's, I'm guessing. So I moved it to the other main burner and, um, and it sounds okay, you know? And so I probably got another 10 minutes or 15 minutes that I could sit here and record maybe less because I do have other prep to do, but, um, But there is a, there are like pros and cons to like being a know-it-all or being someone who, you know, I want to learn how to do everything so, so that I don't have to participate in community, so that I don't have to participate in being vulnerable. Oh no, I don't know how to fix this, so I have to ask for help. Oh God forbid, you know. That's not a phrase that I feel like is authentic to me. I, I, Certainly not a phrase that I would ever say as myself, God forbid. Um, it's funny. Uh, you know, you know that like how you sometimes you'll say things that are clearly not your own. And it's like, what? Who is that? Like, I don't say that phrase. It's really not me. It's not my voice. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's the the reluctance to participate in social give and take and wanting to be self-reliant. Well, it's more for me, it's more about wanting to know everything so that I don't feel unprepared or exposed or ignorant, or I always want to be the one who knows. Um, that's how I protected myself when I was younger. That's my model and that's just what I'm sticking to. So. For me, what that used to look like would be, okay, well, I'm going to figure out what is a stove, what are the burner elements, how does the electricity work, you know, all the different levels of things, like, the, which, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a ridiculous approach, living in social community um, versus trying to be like this person who, yeah, like living, it's like living off the grid and you do everything yourself, um, which is absolutely ridiculous and unachievable and not advisable for most people. And it's extremely isolating. Um, do I get a sense of satisfaction from, but okay, what I was kind of going back to was, you know, as a child, like, oh, it's too, you know, this is, that's too big of a topic right now for the time limit that I have.
because there's a lot of emotional juice and I don't love that word but I, I feel comfortable using it um, like it's kind of a gross word to use like that's where the juice is I mean it's not that bad it's okay but Anyway, well, I don't really have time to talk about anything else, so I think I did start to just randomly delve into various different topics. My intention is to make this a self-indulgent um, exploration that is selfish is for me it's for my i'm trying to save my own life here um, and i hope it works <laughs>